Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin from the Christian Institute. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, says the church needs to face up to the sexual revolution and develop a teaching programme for its schools. In his inaugural address to the General Synod, Archbishop Welby insisted the church is not changing its beliefs about sexual ethics, but said it must accept a change in cultural attitudes. The cultural and political ground is changing. There is a revolution. Anyone who listened, as I did, to much of the same-sex marriage bill's second reading debate in the House of Lords could not fail to be struck by the overwhelming change of cultural hinterland. The Archbishop also thinks more should be done to tackle homophobic bullying. With nearly a million children educated in our schools, we not only must demonstrate a profound commitment to stamp out such stereotyping and bullying, but we must also take action. We are therefore developing a programme for use in our schools, taking the best advice we can find anywhere that specifically targets such bullying. Archbishop Welby has approached the gay rights group Stonewall for help. Chief Executive Ben Summerskill said, we will always help an education provider to tackle homophobic bullying, but added, the cynic would be tempted to think, perhaps, that the Archbishop is trying to distract attention from his failure to engage gay people when they requested it over the issue of marriage. A Court of Appeal ruling has given hope to Christian-run bed and breakfast which restrict double rooms to married couples. The ruling relates to the case of B&B owner Suzanne Wilkinson, who was ordered to pay damages to a gay couple after she told them they couldn't share a double room. Mrs Wilkinson says she was just trying to uphold her Christian beliefs about marriage. Although this week's appeal was unsuccessful, the court said that Mrs Wilkinson's marriage policy should not be regarded as direct discrimination against same-sex couples. When giving the ruling, Lord Dyson said that he would prefer to treat such a policy as indirect discrimination, which can be lawful if the policy is justified, but reluctantly had to follow a previous ruling in a similar case. Mrs Wilkinson said she was encouraged that the three presiding High Court judges have affirmed that the human right of religious belief is intrinsically as important as that of homosexual orientation, and that neither right in principle trumps the other. She continued, it's sad that cases like this are coming to court in a country that has a great Christian heritage. However, whatever the outcome of my case, my faith is grounded in a sovereign, loving and unchanging God and his eternal plans and purposes. Mrs Wilkinson has been granted permission for appeal to the Supreme Court in a case likely to be heard jointly with that of hotel owners Peter and Hazel Mary Bull. The hearings are due to take place in the autumn. The UK could have assisted suicide clinics like Dignitas in Switzerland, according to the head of a leading care home chain. Dr Chai Patel says he wants to have a wider debate about living wills. He thinks the controversial will should let patients set out exactly how, where and when they want to die. The chairman of HC1, which runs over 240 care homes, also says he doesn't think that patients should be forced to travel to the Dignitas clinic to end their lives. But many are concerned that establishing assisted suicide clinics in the UK would put pressure on the elderly and vulnerable to hasten their death. Legislation to introduce limited abortion in Ireland has passed the Irish Parliament after two days of heated debate. The legislation would allow terminations where there is a risk to the life of the mother, including if there's a threat of suicide over her continuing pregnancy. The controversial bill passed by 127 to 31 now proceeds to the Upper House, the Senate, before being signed into law by the President Michael Higgins. The government expects the bill to be enacted before the Parliament breaks for the summer on the 18th of July. But many pro-life campaigners are concerned that the legislation will just open the door to an ever-widening range of abortion laws in the country. Roman Catholic bishops in Ireland say they plan to mount a constitutional challenge to the legislation in the Supreme Court. They say that the bill's legislative process has been unconstitutional and that it fails to give equal rights to the life of the unborn. The number of Christians in England and Wales has been hugely underestimated according to the results of a poll by Ipsos Mori. Figures from the poll reveal the public perception is that around 34% of the population are Christian, but the actual figure according to the last census for England and Wales is 59%. 
Muslims make up only 5% of the population, but people think they account for 24%. The poll also looked at people's perception of other issues, including crime, immigration and welfare. Heaton Shah, Executive Director of the Royal Statistical Society, who commissioned the poll, said, Our data poses real challenges for policymakers. How can you develop good policy when public perceptions can be so out of kilter with the evidence? Children as young as five should have more school books featuring same-sex parents, a Westminster conference is set to hear. The conference, which is due to be attended by the Shadow Education Secretary Stephen Twigg, will discuss the issue next week. Mark McGlashan, a researcher in the Language, Gender and Sexuality Group at Lancaster University, says he wants to see more LGBT material made available for use in schools and claims that research shows that it may be beneficial to target children in early years education. Mr McGlashan says the conference will look at children's literature as a means to challenge homophobic bullying and encourage inclusivity in schools. He added, the idea is that LGBT inclusive literature could help schools address an issue that really is negatively impacting the lives of young people, but the resources aren't there, there just isn't enough good literature available. And finally, a Christian mother has been telling the touching story of the precious moments she shared with her son who was born at just 19 weeks. Walter's life only lasted minutes, but mother Lexi Fretz has written a heartfelt account sharing some amazing photographs of her and her husband Joshua with their little boy. Lexi's story is a poignant reminder of how precious a life is, no matter how short. Lexi recalls, He was perfect, he was fully formed and everything was there. I could see his heart beating in his tiny chest. Joshua and I both held him and cried over him and looked over our perfect tiny son. I held him to my heart. I counted his toes and kissed his tiny head. I will always cherish those memories that I have of him. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.